Hello and welcome back to Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Dicko with the Drone Launch Academy, here to find the answers to your drone questions. And today's question is a good one. We had Zach submitting this one. It's, hey team, I'm trying to get approval to fly in Class D airspace at night. I understand that my Part 107 allows me to fly at night, but only in Class G airspace. Has anyone been successful in getting approval to fly at night in Class D airspace? If so, can you provide some guidance on the steps to receive this type of approval? So I have with me today, David Young, founder, Drone Launch Academy. David, thanks for being back with me today. What's up, John? Good to be back on the podcast, answering some questions. So this is an interesting one. So Class G airspace, I've never even heard of before, but apparently that comes with your Part 107. Yeah. Well, so Class D, air, well, he's at Class D airspace, which is Class Delta, which is controlled airspace. Class G airspace is Class Golf. That is uncontrolled airspace. So... You really don't need any other, any type of special permission to fly in class G airspace, but I'll break this down. We can dive into the flying at night rules. If you want to get nerdy for a moment, put your spectacles on, peruse on over to Google and you can type in part 107.29. That gives you operation at night. This is a federal code of federal regulations that, that dictates what you can do operations at night. It gives you a bunch of mumbo jumbo in here, but essentially. I'll get to the, the part of it that matters. There's two things. So basically, as long as you have either gotten your Part 107 license after April 6th, 2021, because they changed the content on there for the night nighttime rules, or let's say you got like, for me, I got my Part 107 or my remote pilot certificate back in 2016, but I've taken the recurrent training that's on the FAA's website. So if you just type in FAA recurrent commercial drone training, it'll come up. It's like a, like a slideshow training you go through and answer some questions. It's pretty easy. You finish it and you're done. So if you've done that, then you are qualified to fly at night without any type of special waivers because they added some new information on how different lights have impact your vision and how to operate at night. And different. They test you on those types of topics. So they consider you safe to fly at night. There's two requirements. Number one, that you have your Part 107 license after that 2021 date or you've done that recurrent training. So now you as a pilot or operator are able to fly that. And the second requirement is that you have to have anti-collision lighting, which comes in Part 107.29A2 is the section. It says the small unmanned aircraft has lighted anti-collision light visible for at least three statute miles, which are just normal miles. As you know, they compare that to nautical miles, which are a little shorter. Three statute miles that has a flash rate sufficient to avoid collision. The remote pilot in command may reduce the intensity of, but may extinguish the anti-collision lighting, if he or she determines that because of operating conditions, it would be in the interest of safety to do so. Long way of saying, basically, you just need to have anti-collision lighting on there that allows you to see for three miles. And there are different companies that make this. Loom Cube, they make anti-collision lighting. Basically, it's just a little strobe beacon that can go on top. You can put it on the top of your drone, or you can just Google. I'm sure there's a lot of providers out there. You have to have the lighting, and you have to have this uh, Part 107 updated certificate or training. Now, that doesn't distinguish between controlled airspace, uncontrolled airspace. So Zach's question was about class Delta specifically. And I guess he was thinking that it was some type of other requirement for that. But there's really not. It's going to be the same whether you're in class G, class Delta, or class Golf, class Delta, class Charlie, whatever. The controlled or uncontrolled. The only difference is you have to get prior authorization from the FAA before flying in those controlled airspace, just like you do during the day or any other time. So just to check and make sure like, hey, let me just do this for myself. I went to an area around my house, which happens to be in class Delta airspace for the Lakeland uh, Linder International Airport. It's a small airport, but I said, all right, hey, I'm going to fly from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. This is when it was uh, definitely dark outside at that time. And I was able to get approval instantly, boom, right away. Just says, hey, make sure you have your anti-collision lighting and you're up to date uh, and you're good to go. So right here, I have my FAA authorization. You have it here. They can put it on the screen if they want. If you're watching this on YouTube, I did this on honestly probably like a month ago, month or month, six weeks ago when I was looking into this. So we have the authorization right here. We'd get our strobe light on our drone. We'd have our up-to-date training and you're good to go. That's really the answer. It's just, you have to meet those criteria. There may be some confusion because before 2021, you were not allowed to operate after sunset. So you could operate in the period of civil twilight, evening civil twilight, which is kind of like when the sun is going down. But there was all these rules about like, 30 minutes after this civil twilight that and you had to have the beacon lighting between these this specific hour it was complicated and if you're going to fly after that you had to go get an actual waiver she so had to submit a paperwork to the faa that says hey here are all the mitigations and safety concerns i'm going to take into account and how i'm going to stay safe and then they would look at it review it send it back to you approve it for it's like 
all this rig and roll back and forth, that is no more. So that's probably why there was confusion before that all changed 2021. So yeah, a little bit of a shorter one, but that is the answer to that question. Okay. And I'm just recapping, making sure I just have it straight myself. So when it comes to controlled airspace, that's class G. Nope. So controlled airspace is class, well, class A, which you'll never fly in because that is 18,000 feet and up. Okay. That's like airliners and stuff, or technically it's a flight level 180. And then places where drone operators are operating in is going to be class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo. So B, C, D, E. So we teach in our part 107 course, class B, Bravo. That's big airports. So think Miami, Dallas, New York, right? Many layers, many different tiers, lots of air traffic coming in and out, big jets. If you're going to, it's going to be complicated to fly in class Bravo airspace. You're going to be in the way potentially of a lot of things. It's possible though. There's, you can get instant authorization in certain areas, but sometimes it can get complicated. Class Charlie, think secondary cities, less busy airports like Savannah, Georgia, those types, right? And those typically have two rings, like an inner ring that goes all the way to the surface and then an outer ring that starts, you know, at a few, usually a few thousand feet in the air. That's to allow for the aircraft approaching in so that way they can stay in controlled airspace on their entire sort of descent. And then class Delta airspace, so smaller airports. So like the Lakeland airport, class Delta, we have one commercial flight right now. It flies from here to New Haven, Connecticut and back. And outside of that, it's just private jets for Publix. Publix headquarters is here. There's a couple other companies that are here or around here. They'll keep their company jets there. They do the Sun and Fun here, which is like a really huge air show. It's probably the biggest thing that happens here. here. That's class Delta airport. Where I got my pilot's license was in Melbourne, Florida. So Melbourne International Airport was also class Delta, class D airspace. They had a few Delta flights coming in and out, you know, confusing because class D you, in aviation, you say class Delta, Delta is also the name of airline. They had a few Delta flights, a few commercial flights coming in and out, but nothing too busy, right? I'd take, take off and land there with a little four seater plane all the time with no real, no real problems, um, smaller airport. And then class E, class Echo is a controlled airspace at an airport, but there's no air traffic control tower. So there's nobody being like, Hey, you're cleared to land. You're cleared to take off taxi to this one. No one controlling the flow because there is even less traffic. So you typically just self-announce your position if you're a pilot coming in there. So if you're a drone operator and you're in a class echo airspace, if you are inside of class echo airspace, that's designated for an airport. So it goes all the way to the surface. And this is outside of the original question, but just so you know, you do have to have authorization from the FAA to fly there, but you would then sort of probably want to be listening to the, it's called the common traffic advisory frequency, CTAF. You can look those up for any airport. You can pull them up on the computer and stream them, or you can get a little radio receiver and tune into it, you'll hear aircraft announce their position. So you'll know, oh, here's where my drone is. There might be airplane coming in, kind of good situational awareness. And then finally, there's no F. They skipped F, went straight to G, golf. So they teach you class G, class golf, G means go. So uncontrolled airspace, you know, you don't have to get permission. This is like any rural area, any area that's probably not around an airport or not on an approach path into an airport. This is most of the country. And so far fewer rules there. FAA is not providing, you know, flight direction and guidance in those areas. That's the gamut of airspace types and when you do need or don't need permission, but the, the rules for flying at night are the same across any of those airspace rules. Okay. Oh, no, I, I appreciate that clarity. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for, for coming on and answering this question. We, we appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll have you on again shortly. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, John. Hey, if you got a drone question, please send it our way. We'd love to find the answer for you. If you're part of the Drone Launch Connect community, type your question in there. We see so many questions coming in there. If somebody else in that community doesn't get to it before I do, we'll answer it here on this podcast. Or you can go ahead and submit your question over ydqa.io. Type it in. We'll see it and we will find someone who can answer it. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.